usually make exactly twice as much noise as you were making before. Uh, yeah, uh, so that uh, Dee can feel warmed and welcomed and uh, not have to go out into the rain. I'm going to read uh, Dee Collins' bio to you. Do you all know that Dee Collins is featured this evening? Before, but I'm afraid some of you were making zero noise before, so I didn't get anything out of that one. Okay. Do me a favor, give it up to Welcome Decal. Let me give it to you all the way from all the way. twice at WAPS in 2016 and 2017, and she will again in just two weeks uh, rep the Nitty Gritty Slam in the whole capital region of New York uh, and the Women of the World Poetry Slam, which is in Texas? Yes. Texas? Yeah, I got it. I forget which, which city, but it's totally back in Texas this year. Uh, Dallas. It's back in Dallas again, which has been like a really like wonderful, welcoming city for Women of the World. Um, so, uh, Dee Collin comes to you from, as I said, very specifically not from New York City, but from the capital region, where she's like part of like the founding set of voices that make nitty gritty happen up there. Um, she has some amazing credits, including a master's in Africana Studies from the University of Albany. She's 2016 Poet in Residence for Voices of Community in Putney and Brattleboro, Vermont, and a Breathing Lights grant recipient. A recipient. Her first collection of poems and prose is entitled Dreaming in Cradle, is an homage to her Haitian heritage and history, and she is out of that book right now. You can't get it on Kindle. You can go to Amazon and look up uh, Decon uh, and find her book. You can also like email her about like how to get that book in your hands physically. Um, but uh, in addition to being a poetic artist, Dee is also a polymath, which means that she has physical art for you in the back. She uh, has paintings. She has earrings. Um, yeah, there's a necklace and bracelets back there. Take a peek at uh, what she has. And I also I brought this card up to show you. Empress Bohemia uh, is her is her site where uh, you can grab one of her cards and take a look at. If you don't see exactly the thing that you like, uh, her site may have that thing. Also, that includes her book, which might be exactly the thing you like. So, the sad thing is that you can't buy a book from Dee Collin, but the amazing thing means that tonight, this half hour, is the product that you get to experience. It is the art and the artist that you get to experience. You're here in this ephemeral, singular moment to have 30 minutes of work from this artist. Dee is an artist that I've like, just gotten to intersect with a few times at different New England slam events. And every time she comes to the stage, like I'm filled with like this brightness and excitement. Um, she is both a person who chooses and crafts her words extremely carefully, and also pulls exactly zero punches for you. Um, she brings a great power and message to her work, um, and she takes the time uh, to craft it into the package that is important to her and that will be compelling to you. Um, really, just excited to get to hear a full arc of this poet's work right before she like heads off to a world competition. Folks, without further ado, uh, please put your hands together for Dee Collin. Oh, 
language that feels like home. The words come to mind when I can't find the right ones in English, this language I learned first, the cadence, the dance that sways with my tongue, le mueva le creole. When I speak creole, I have the voice of Haiti in my throat, thirsting to tell stories that may never be translatable, but will always end with hope, and for that, they will always be worth telling. They cut the son's head off in Cité Soleil, Haiti. Poverty bleeds internally there. She lives in the city of the sun, five children, husband dead, murdered for supporting TT. They beat her, they stalk her, they be at her house, she beat them by hiding. She lives in the city of the sun, where she married again, married a man who raped her daughter, ripped her heart more, six children, new baby, no money. She lives in the city of the sun, where water floods her home, way in the water, her family waits in the water, in the city of the sun, where it seldom shines, so turn the sun on its pregnant belly over the horizon, birthing femme haitienne, Haitian women, mountain women, Diamond Simon, behind the mountains are more mountains, Diamond Simon, like a million hills rolling before the sun, these women carry resistance in their sweats, they walk in worn shoes, calloused feet, dark skin glistens in the noon sun, veins map their hands, river, 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 River water comes through Haiti's dry land as their stomachs empty, sagging breasts like eroded hillsides. The women carry water on their heads, water in their wombs, water off their floors. They are potomitum, center pillars holding a collapsed house while the sun breaks dawn like coconuts cracked open with machetes. These women back to Neb, beat back the dark, turn the sun on its pregnant belly over the horizon, birthing a new day. <laughs> Laugh the women. We are still here and we run the book. Neighborhood watchers, be water our clothes on rocks. Write secret messages in the money. Be at water when the sun goes into labor and you will see her. Ana Kayona, Ana Kayona. Golden flower hangs in the sky. Taino chief thieves hang for trying to negotiate peace with Columbus. These women rest in her story. Burning souls rest in her blazing sun. They cut the sun's head off in Cité Soleil, Haiti. These women birth a new one every day. Mountain women, militant mountains. Diamond Simon, behind the mountains are more mountains. Diamond Simon, like a million hills rolling before the sun. These women carry Haiti in their sweats. It's um that poem and the next two poems are from my collection of poems called Dreaming and Creole and it's Creole with a K. Um, I spelled it I spelled it the Creole way. <laughs> so it's K-R-E-Y-O-L if you want to download it on Kindle. Um, and I ordered books today. So if you want to just wait, you know, <laughs> to to purchase the printed copy, then you know that's all good too. Uh, this is called I'll Tico Me Some. Her face shone in the blazing octibu. Her face shone. Oh, I know what I need. Can you pass me my, my ginger ale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Thank you. Clap it up for Robert Cooper. <laughs> All right. Her face shone in the blazing octibu sun. Black skin, silky. Coffee bean black, blue black, purple, with pearls for teeth. I stood perplexed by my 13 year old mind. Black, blue, beautiful. The light grew bright over my head like the Haiti sun. Knew when I came back, if anyone called me ugly, if they mistook my dark for dreadful, if they called me cockroach ever again, it was a bold lie. This skin and all the dark in it is mine and beautiful. So um, I wrote this poem years ago and the, the line that I, I've added is not in the book. Um, but you know, number 45 gave me a new line, so 
you're gonna hear it tonight in the poem, but when you read the book, it's not there, which is fine. He doesn't have any space in my book, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called Beyond What They Say, or We Are Beyond It. We are beyond it. They say we are the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. We are beyond it. They say we run in hills barefoot with dust in our hair. We are beyond it. They say we made a pact with the devil that we threw hexes with voodoo to overthrow colonial gurus. But who knew we had more people going to church than to Uga and Lugaus? And so what? We still dance and sway our hips to the music of mountains where our ancestors could plotting when we were slaves, when we were rebels, when we were revolutionaries, revolutionizing revolution until we were free. We revolted. We signed no papers. We took their papers. We made new papers. We negotiated with no one. 1804 spent war on our kidnappers and won because we were people. We were people with dreams. We had lost our fathers. We had lost our mothers. We had lost our lands. We had lost ours. We were angry. We were hopeful. We were determined. We were black. We were black blue. We were the people. Negroes, La Pelles, until We were the richest colony in the world. Sugar cane, cotton, cocoa, tobacco, and indigo. IT. Land of mountains in the Arawak language. Despite poverty's winds, we stand like mountains. Despite terror's rain, we stand like mountains. Despite the drought of death, the flood of false promises only redefines our sides. We don't move for the convenience of others. We are mountains. We stood like we stood aside. Americans in the American Revolution fighting for their freedom while we were still slaves. We stand like Bookman, like Toussaint, like Christophe, like Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Emperor King. We stand like Wyatt who let black Americans emigrate to Haiti before ethnicity, before islands, rivalry, before when just being black was a thing to be because we were one. We are one. We are African, period. They say we're not American, but the American city Chicago was founded by a Haitian, Jean-Baptiste Puentesabla. They say we live in hell. We live on Earth, in Altibonis, Gonaï, Purepe, Puerto Prince, Jacma, Brooklyn, Boston, Miami, Spring Valley, New York, Georgia, Moya, France, the world. They say you can't even pick up a prostitute down there without genuine fear of AIDS. Well, you can't pick up a prostitute anywhere without genuine fear of AIDS. They say our literacy rate is high. We are beyond it. We have become linguists. We speak French, Creole, Spanish, and English. They say immigrants shouldn't come from bullshit, from shithole countries like this one. But actually, we are the shit. We were always the shit. We have become presidents, prime ministers, doctors, lawyers, artists, LPNs, teachers, musicians, poets. We have become, we were enslaved, we were taken, but we have become Haiti, the second oldest republic in the Western Hemisphere after the United States, the oldest black republic in the world for our sons, for our daughters, for our freedom. We make dying beautiful. And it doesn't matter now what they say. They say we are the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. I say we are beyond it. to snap your fingers, or just like, mm, or <laughs> clap, you know, or like, I don't know, even throw an amen, I don't know. Whatever the spirit just does for you, you can do that, this is a conversation, okay? Conversation? Yep. So I have, I am feel your energy, you feel my energy, and then we just have like the whole like, conversation happening. Um, I mean, there's just so much material. <laughs> you know, they ain't even keep up with the material, really. Like, you turn off the news, you miss it out. You miss out on like what happened today. Um, so this particular poem I wrote last year on Inauguration Day, and. I just felt like that energy. Y'all didn't say nothing, but I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. Um, Maya Angelou has a poem that she did um, at Bill Clinton's inauguration called On the Pulse of Morning. And um, I was a middle school educator. And I was going, to, you're welcome. That's, that's hard. <laughs> 
No, it was eighth grade. Oh. <laughs> so, um, so Maya Angelou has a poem called On the Pulse of the Morning, and, and on this particular day, going to work out of school where it's 99.99% black, um, and passing the portrait of Barack Obama on the on the wall. There's just so much I was feeling. Um, so this is called On the Pulse of Ancestors, um, written January 20th, 2017. By the way, I'm deathly afraid of birds. <laughs> like for real, for real. I'll run out this building if I see something. That's <laughs> The feature just be done, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really um, so here we go. Today I looked at the sky. I heard the call of, of the crows, black wings, and flying on a warm January afternoon. They give me pause when I leave work. I become keenly aware of my pulse. When my heart stops, I believe there will be a bird pecking at its last beat. I have never known peace at the sight of beaks, flocks flocking together, organizing like they are also in protest. Like they will march across a DC sky tonight to prepare for tomorrow. For years I have been afraid of birds, flinch in my eye if they are to close, well of tears, clench of my fists, flight, swift movement of my feet in safety's direction, but today the crows called my name made me turn my face to look up, welcome their terror as an ally, an omen of change. I should have cried, trembled like a child at winter air's mercy, but today I breathed. Today, the crows came by the hundreds like ancestors come to fill me with their pul pulsing histories, like a meeting of souls come to teach to survive. Their wings weep across my heart like a widow in mourning numbed by an open casket but i know this bus ride home ain't no regular home going i will breathe for what is lost sing a new song of freedom to the call of crows gathering to send messages from the other side i will be walking with ghosts with fists in the air i should have been afraid but today i felt nothing less than my pulse i am alive and history needs me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The gunshots, then the screaming stopped. Silence hung, waiting for protests like strange fruit ripened by the sun. This skin, no matter how you rub, don't wipe off on streets where target practice ain't enough. Hearts bleed on bloodstained sidewalks, crying for sons. Let the drop seep through the soil six feet deep where kin weep and dead bodies keep cold. Just ice, unseen by just eyes. And justice dies in villainizing victims, vi vi victimizing villains. Let our hearts be 10 times harder for every bullet, 40 and 10 times for every wallet unidentified, 50 and 10 times for every wedding bell unsung, on mornings when morning death is like a nightstick sodomizing our core, and dreams haunted by ghosts and white hoods grip our sleep, and the stink of decaying flesh overwhelms the sweet smell of Skittles on a walk home on those mornings. Let us rise strong, courageous, and vigilant to cowardly vigilantes who will never settle for our existence, who underestimate our resistance when we've not turned our way through history after being Emmett tilled and still black skin and a hoodie leads to being killed or king to shot or beaten like the ring of freedom never rung. Liberty dressed in blood seeping through the soil where dead bodies still keep cold, still screaming, I can't breathe, 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 I can't breathe. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. If I ever have sons, if I ever have sons, I will teach them to know their bloodlines before chalk lines ever sketch their bodies. Lay their hands in the wet concrete so the ground can know their touch before it tastes their blood. Let their voices scream louder than shots fired until we rise strong, courageous, and vigilant to cowardly vigilantes who will never settle for our existence. Okay, I 
something else and make it happen. All right, so I'm gonna teach you. That's a hard poem. Um, okay. Do y'all want funny or are you gonna just ride this way? All the poems. <laughs> All the poems. Okay. Well, we just laughed, so now I feel like I can could, I could do the hair poem. It's not all the way funny, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, my hair is natural. Woo! And, uh, Woo! People have a lot to say, you know? And I mean, it's like all kinds of people, like family, like black people, like white people, like everybody has something to say about my hair. I don't know. So, <laughs> so this, this poem is called That Thing on My Head. <laughs> When my hair was relaxed, the only two questions asked were, is it real? And what do you use? Now that I've transitioned from straight hair to my natural self, it's like people have hypertension, share all sorts of comments and questions like, how long does that take you? As if they sit for hours getting descended at least twist or they're washed and set, as if they never had someone scratch the dandruff out for so long they fall asleep on someone's knee. And then there's my pet pee. Can I touch it? Mm. <laughs> As if I'm some type of exotic pet. Go find a poodle. <laughs> or comments like, you know Easter Sunday is coming up. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> this one is usually accompanied by a look of concern. Oh, why didn't you comb your hair today? Oh, it's combed. But you can't run the comb through. Oh, you can't? But how do you get it this soft? Wait, it's soft? All of these are usually accompanied by a look of confusion, and the list goes on like, are you ever gonna straighten that? I mean, you're gonna straighten that for your wedding, right? What about graduation? I mean, come on, how do you start to get a man, a job? You don't think you look like an old lady? Whoa, speechless with, speech, speech, I cannot talk tonight. Speechless with raised eyebrows. And this one, did you stick your finger in an electrical socket this morning? <laughs> no, but I know who can stick an electrical socket. <laughs> Are you Jamaican? Again, speechless. There are two strand twists, not locks, and then not all Jamaicans have locks. You're right. So why don't you just get locks? I see this is a pointless conversation. Doesn't matter if my hair is out on two strand twist, braided on the side, pro pop in the middle, or wash angle. If it's not straight, some people just don't understand. Makes me want to have discussions on the effects of colonialism on the mind, the brainwashing of the media, the overwhelming abundance of images showing black women with long, flowy hair when we really know the truth. When we know our hair blows in the wind only on the day we leave the salon, and then it's all hope. <laughs> Makes me want to have arguments like if a man doesn't want me because I have straight hair, maybe you shouldn't have me at all. And if a job won't hire me, maybe I need to hire myself. And if you can't handle looking at my hair on Easter Sunday, maybe you should question why it is you go to church. <laughs> <laughs> and just to seal the deal, I will not be straightening my hair for graduation or Easter or my wedding. Besides the fact that this thing on my head we refer to as that is just the way it grows. Thank you. I like it. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm terrible at self-promotion and it just crossed my mind, so I'm going to try it. Go <laughs> in. My website is dcolin.com, D-C-O-L-I-N.com. My jewelry line is Empress Bohemia. I have some stuff in the back. I made these earrings that I have on. Um, and I also paint. And um, I sing just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> do you have an Etsy account? I do have an Etsy. That's right. Nice. Etsy. Thank you. See, I'm terrible at it, but I have assistance. Um, so my Etsy is Empress Bohemia. So if you go on Etsy and you look up Empress Bohemia, um, you'll find me. That's it. And I'm on every kind of social media, Instagram. Poet D. Collin and Empress Bohemia. Empress Bohemia and um, on my Facebook and Twitter. So I'm easy to find. Or you can just go to dcollin.com and you find everything. <laughs> Alright, so let's see, let's see. How am I doing on time? You got like two. Hmm? Two? Oh, you want to do two? Yeah. 
that Harriet Tubman had to be an angry black woman, that Sojourner Truth had to be an angry black woman, that Asada Shakur had to be an angry black woman, that Fannie Lou Hamer had to be an angry black woman, that Rosa Parks had to be an angry black woman, that Shirley Chisholm had to be an angry black woman, that Ida B. Wells had to be an angry black woman, that Coretta Scott King had to be an angry black woman, that Betty Shabazz had to be an angry black woman, and ain't that the point? That I have every right to be angry. Angry about our trees cut down and the roots left there naked in the sun. About history being his story one too many times. About the corrections to my language when my tongue was already cut out. About gentrification, about discrimination, about appropriation of my culture, my body, my colloquialisms. About bullet spraying on, like a carnival game on victims with no weapons. About the prison industrial complex. About being called everything but my name. Mammy, Jezebel, Ratchet, Bitch. About this reflection someone put in the mirror that ain't my own, I have every right to break the glass. This anger ain't yours to police, ain't yours to cage up like a bird, ain't yours is the point. I've been trying not to be an angry black woman. Truth is, I ain't trying no more. And you gonna be glad one day. I said you gonna be glad one day I was angry enough to change the world. <laughs>